All right, welcome back to Winter, Winter Garden, Florida for tonight's matchup between West Orange Warriors and Apopka Blue Darters. Dan, before we went to break, we're just moments away here from the coin toss to find out who's going to get the ball first here. But before we went to break, we were talking about the vibe on the field. You and I were down there before the game. We were kind of sizing up each team, and you're right. Apopka des definitely has that the business as usual uh, attitude as usual. Yeah, you know, again, you know, Apopka is coming off of a, a, a heartbreaking loss heartbreaking. last week to Jones. And um, West Orange has been uh, has been rolling right along. You know they've they've won their last two uh, against um, uh, Lake Mary, and then also uh, a big win last week against Windermere. So, you know uh, West Orange has got a, a, quite a bit of a momentum coming into this game. But but I expect both of these teams ready to play each other. And you know this is a rivalry game here. It really know. it really is. And I I don't know if like so, you know. Uh, people in the local market have have forgotten that, but this is this was these were the two teams on this side of town uh, for a long time, and uh, it was always it was always a battle between these two teams. So it's good to see this matchup as the game of the week. And you know, Coach Granado's first year here at West Orange, uh, he's really got the program rolling. I mean, I would say between besides the one quarter against Boone in the fourth quarter, they would be undefeated. Uh, this is a team that could be four zero right now, Dan. Absolutely, and and considering the fact he's the fifth head coach in the last four years. West Orange has been looking for that type of leadership, and and I, you know, when they when they announced Mike Granado as the head coach, I was excited for them. You know, th this community, this high school, this program deserves to have a, a great leader, and and we're excited for Coach Granado and for the, the the Winter Garden community. Yeah, you know, his whole family's from Winter Garden. He grew up in this area, so he has a real sense of community, kind of already invested in him, built within him. So we're, Apopka's going to be kicking off here. West Orange Warriors are in blue. Apopka is in white. All right, Kobe Vasquez for the Apaca Blue Daughters is going to get us started off tonight. Let's get the game underway. All right, it's going to be a touchback here. Matthew McDoom, number 11, uh, took that touchback as uh, West Orange comes out on the field. Another McDoom playing at West Orange. What, go figure. There's been about three of them, I think, that's come through here. Well, you were, um, we were talking about the rivalry. You know, both schools were built back in 1976, and they were identically built. So it's um, – this, this, this game, like you said, is – you know, this has been the two teams that really did own the western side of Orange County for a number of years before expansion took over. All right, Tyler Huff at quarterback number 12 in the pistol. First and 10 from the 20. This little inside handoff there. It's going to get him about two yards there, which will bring up second and eight. Dan, do you, do you expect to, Tyler Huff in the offense for, for West Orange, do you, do you expect to see them, obviously, uh, ratio from pass, pass to run? Would you, do you, would you want to say 60-40, 50-50? How do you see West Orange coming out tonight? Well, 60-40, 50-50 is pretty much in the same category. I think it's going to be very balanced. Uh, but Tyler Huff, make no mistake, is one of the best pure passers in Central Florida. He had an outstanding game last week. And, um, you know, he, he can get the ball down the field. He looked very comfortable in warm-ups tonight. It looked like we had some movement up front, Dan. That might back up the Warriors five yards here. Looked like they had McDoom in motion there. I'm wondering if they were going to look at some sort of jet sweep there out of that pistol formation. You know, like we said, last week was a heartbreaker for Apopka, uh, losing literally in the final <laughs> couple minutes against Jones. But uh, you know they've got one of the they've got an outstanding defense, probably one of the best defenses in Central Florida. So you know, looking at this matchup of how West Orange is going to move the ball, we're going to see a lot here in the first couple series. All right, second and thirteen for the Warriors. Let's see what Coach Granado wants to do here. Going to go a little play action out into the flats. McDoom. Nothing really doing out there, Dan. You know they tried to get it to him quick. He's one of their playmakers, but Apopka sniffed it out. And Josiah Robinson on the tackle on that. Look for West Orange to target uh, Jaden Gibson quite a bit. He's their number one receiver. He's at the top of your screen. Third and 11. Tyler Huff and Gunn.
Looks like they had a little miscommunication on the route there, which is going to bring up fourth down, and West Orange is already off the field. Man, it's a, a little slow start, little little jitters out there, I think. Well, I think Tyler Huff also felt a little bit of pressure. Yeah. You, sophomore phenom, uh, Caven Call, was coming off that edge and, and breathing down his neck. So Yeah, it looks like he took a little shot there, too. Yeah, I th you know, Caven <laughs> gave him a little kiss there coming off, yeah. uh, coming off that, and, uh, you know, I think that's some of the pressure Tyler could see tonight. Um, you know, that, that, that kid's only a sophomore and, and already dominating most of the teams they're going up against. Nakai Martinez is back to receive for the Popka Blue Darters. Ooh, man. Dan, I, I don't know about you, but it looked like a pop got a chance to block that. Nakai Martinez will take it across midfield. Apopka's already in West Orange Warriors territory. That's going to bring up first and 10 for the Blue Darters from the 47-yard line. Looked like the, kick, the kicker, Matthew Perez, actually got the stop on that as well. <laughs> Looking for the kicker to get into the action early in the game. Now let's see what kind of defense uh, this the, is the, the Warriors question. are going to have. You know, this is something we've looked at all season is how are they going to, to face up against that, that ground attack from Apopka. Pretty good defensive line play there. Number 52 for West Orange is actually, a, he's only a sophomore. He's the youngest member, Chris Fica. He's a, he, his brother is actually the offensive line coach uh, for the Warriors. But uh, this is a young man. He's the youngest member of the uh, defensive line. And, Dan, we talked about this. This is the question mark kind of for West Orange. Their D-line needs to really show up tonight. Yeah, especially, you know, running in that 4-3, actually in a 3-4. You know, are they going to get enough guys at the line of scrimmage? And I think we're getting that answer tonight. You know, de the defense is looking pretty stout so far early. Yeah, they're loading the box. They know they, they know without Jaquan Loman. And let's let's back up a little bit. Jaquan Loman, the starting quarterback for Apopka, he is out tonight, correct? Yeah, and, you know, Jaquan was injured toward the end of the third quarter against Jones last week. Um, has a little bit of soreness in, in his shoulder and, and just for preventative measures. Uh, you know, coach wanted to hold him out tonight, so we will not see him. In fact, number 11 is going to be worn tonight by linebacker Curtis Spivey. So as we see 11 on the field, that is not going to be Jaquan Loman. It's Curtis Spivey. All right, third and six for Apopka. Do we see the rare pass from Apopka? Nope. Going to keep it on the ground. Wow. And West Orange defense has come to play tonight. I talked to Coach Granado before the game. He said... Our defense has to show up in order for us to be able to compete tonight, and it looks like so far the Warriors are here to, here to play. You know, that was Jonas Polonese, also the senior linebacker, came in and made that tackle. So you're going to hear holding, that holding a popka to, to to three and out in that first series. Uh, you can see why they were really excited uh, during warmups tonight. They're they're pumped up and ready to play. You know, Heath. The other thing too about this series is it's pretty much split the last seven years. Uh, Apopka reeled off about 15 wins prior to that. So West Orange has done a really good job uh, getting back into this rivalry here the last uh, handful of years here. All right, Matthew McDoom back to receive. I think he's going to let this one go, and it's going to go out at about the, what's about called? the, the we'll call it the 10-yard line. It's going to be first and 10 for the Warriors from their own 10. Interesting here. Let's see what Coach Granado goes with. I, I don't know if they're going to try to go throwing on first down with Tyler Huff. Well, I they think everything they're going to do right now is run and get the ball out of his hand quick and see if they can take advantage of some of the speed on the corner. Yeah, once again, Jaden Gibson's at the bottom of your screen. He's the tall receiver for, for West Orange. That Tyler Huff, that's his favorite target. First and 10 from the 10. Little inside zone handoff. Not much doing there either. We've had we've probably had a combined four yards of offense so far in this game, but uh, the, the I think things will settle in here shortly. Yeah, you know, Trevarian, uh, Trevarian Barnes actually was in on that tackle. You know, he's an outstanding prospect uh, in his senior year out of Apopka. You know, once we start getting into the recruiting season here in the next few weeks, we're going to start hearing his name quite a bit more. Yeah, we saw him on the field before the game. He's a beast. 
A little false start. I think that I, I couldn't tell if the offense jumped there, but I think it's actually going to go against a Popka, and it and it is. So that that'll bring that'll shorten the field up a little bit for him. That'll be bring up second and five. We'll call it four and a half for the West Orange Warriors. Tyler Huff once again in gun. We haven't seen him under center. I don't think we're going to see him under center. I think West Orange runs almost everything out out of the gun. Tyler Huff back to pass. He's got he's got a receiver, and he's going to overthrow him. It's going to be incomplete, which will bring up third down, third and we'll call it a long four. Yeah, you know, and, and that was double coverage there. He did the best thing is just get it out of reach. But, you know, one of the things that's very interesting about this offense is you see a lot of these high schools going to an RPO, a yeah. run-pass option. West Orange is, is looks like they're in a strict run, uh, uh, drop back. You know, there's no there's no misdirection there by the quarterback. He is dropping back and reading the reading the defense. Third and five from the 15 yard line. Tyler Huff in gun. McDoom in motion to the bottom of your screen here. Nice footwork by by Tyler Huff. He's gonna get the first down. Going to move the change. Tyler Huff kept the play alive, Dan, and you like to see that out of your young quarterback. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, he he's uh, showing quite a bit of poise so far here early in the game. Um, this is a kid that doesn't get rattled very easily. So him taking control and taking advantage of what the Apopka defense is going to give him is going to be key. Yeah, I like to see his footwork there, how he got out of the pocket. That was, that was beautiful. That was nice. So Tyler Huff picks up the first down. That's going to bring up a first and 10 for the Warriors from the 24-yard line. Going to see a little jet sweep here. Nice cut up to get a couple yards there, really. That, I thought they were going to get tackled for a loss. That was a great job by yeah. Anthony Joseph on that tackle as well. Yeah, that was Jack Main, the senior wide receiver for the Warriors. Good-looking kid. Uh, also, another one of Tyler Huff's uh, targets. You'll probably hear his name quite a bit tonight. I haven't seen them this year use him on that jet sweep before, so that's a new wrinkle to the offense for well, West you know, Orange. One of the things that you know, Coach Granado talked to us about before the game was that he was going to use some guys on both sides of the ball that he hasn't typically done as well. So, Tyler Huff in the pistol, McDoom in motion. A little inside handoff there. Going to get maybe a yard. It's going to bring up third and five for the Warriors. McDoom's coming back onto the field. And that was a nice little run by Terrell Walden, the second junior running back. You know, they're going to run guys in and out. You're going to see two or three running backs for each team in this game, keeping guys fresh. This is going to be a physical team, a physical game between both of these offense and defensive lines. We've got Jeremy Rudolph Jr. making an appearance up there at the slot. He's number 10. Dan, you know a little bit about his father, don't well, you? you know, his father actually played at a pop game. He did. Was an outstanding option quarterback for Opopka. So we're excited to see what uh, what the youngster has to show us uh, and the skill sets he got from his dad. And once again, Caven Call has gotten in on that defense. And we got guys, we got some guys Whoa. pushing and shoving out there. Hey, you know, I think the rivalry <laughs> aspect of this game is uh, is definitely in the back of their minds. You know, Coach Rolson's lucky that they didn't get an unsportsmanlike conduct there. Um, a young man took his helmet off on the field and slammed it on the ground. I'm surprised they did not get 15 there. That would have extended this drive, but instead the refs are going to let, let them play. Well, I can uh, tell you that a pop coaching staff is correcting that situation oh, can, as we speak. You are absolutely correct, Dan. Uh, West Orange is going to have to punt here. You know, when was the last time you went to an Apopka or a West Orange game and they had to, they, they pretty much had to punt on their first couple series? Right, yeah. Usually this, the field is. Usually. Oh, man, almost blocked again. again. Almost blocked. And Nakai Martinez calls fair catch. He's going to let it fall. Once and, again, Apopka's going to take over right around midfield. And Great that was, field position. And that was Jaquan Harris that got in there and, and literally almost got that. Well, Dan, we're in Winter Garden, Florida tonight. You couldn't ask for better football weather. No, it's beautiful. 
it's beautiful. This is this is what what we've been waiting for. We're gonna we're gonna take a quick break for water. When we come back, we'll have more of the West Orange Warriors versus the Apaka Blue Darters right here on the Varsity Sports Network. Hey, Bobby. Because it was in Orlando a little while ago. All right, welcome back to Winter Garden, Florida. For the Apopka Blue Darters, are going to take over here at the the 45-yard line. Apopka throws a little swing pass out into the flats. Oh, and there's a fumble. West Orange has picked it up. He's still on his feet. You know that was Keandre Jones there at, at quarterback as well. With the run back, first and ten Warriors. Looks like Tosin Schwallenbach. Yeah, Tyler Schwalbeck, number seven, the Mike linebacker there, got in there, calls that fumble. You know, that's something that, uh, you know, can really can really get the game going here for West Orange. Well, they got great field position looking at. Uh, and that was Jamari Jones on the fumble recovery there for the West Orange Warriors. We have an injured player right now for the Blue Daughters on the field. So, Dan, the first time a Popka ends up throwing the ball, uh, it results in a fumble. Um, I, we were talking and joking before the game, the over-under on how many times a Popka would throw the ball tonight at five. You said you took the over, and uh, you said it would be six. So, uh, right now, I think we're looking at uh, a pop is going to keep it on the ground for most of the night. Obviously, their quarterback, their, their, uh, it was actually the player of the year for ESPN Radio last year, Jaquan Lohman, who's out tonight. He led his team last year. This is an Apopka team that has some guys returning that went to the state championship game all the way to the state. And uh, they're, they're without Jaquan Lohman tonight. That's obviously a, a significant loss to the Blue Darters. Um, but, you know, we talked with the coaches before the game, and I said, you know, who's going to be your starting quarterback? And he said, uh, all of our running backs. So it's going to be by committee tonight. You know, that single wing offense is something that you really can run with multiple guys, you know, touching the ball first. Well, the biggest thing about that pocket team is most of those guys from the state championship game last year were sophomores and juniors, and this year they're seniors and juniors. So they've been in this type of situation before. Remember, a pop was only lost last year was to Jones. So they've been through this scenario of how to get back on track. Tyler Huff out to Rudolph. And not much doing out there. That's going to be a loss of a yard. It's going to bring up second and 11 here for the West Orange Warriors. You know, they're trying to get the ball out quick over there to, to Rudolph and some of the some of their playmakers. I, I, I totally see what Renato is doing, trying to get Tyler Huff comfortable uh, early in the game. And going back to Rudolph, uh, Dan, we, we got kind of cut off, but uh, his father, Jeremy Rudolph, one of the best players of Central Florida history. No, and, and he was an outstanding uh, outstanding player for Apopka. You know, set set a number of records rushing the ball and, and was uh, very, very similar to a Jaquan Lohman. Um, you know, having the ability of doing multiple things. A little inside handoff there for the West Orange Warriors. And once again, not much doing out there. It's going to bring up third and ten for the Warriors. You know, you want to capitalize when anytime you can have a, you know, get a turnover in your opponent's territory. So let's see what Coach Granado wants to do here. He's calling the play and signaling it in. You know, it's interesting because, you know, I know him as a defensive backs coach. He was the defensive backs coach and defensive coordinator last year for Edgewater, uh, another team that went to the state championship game. So, you know, there, there, there is some wisdom on the field, guys, for t uh, tonight on both sides of the field in terms of coaching. No, and you know, Coach Granado has been around the block. He's he was part of championship teams over at Edgewater with Coach Cameron Duke. So you know, he has he has the blueprint of, of what what needs to be done. 
And Tyler, he's got plenty of talent over here. Tyler Huff to Jack Main, which they're going to call that a catch. Jack Main, this is one of Tyler Huff's favorite receivers to throw to. And Jack, Jack did a wonderful job going yeah. up and getting that ball. Yeah, he, he didn't wait for it to come down either. You're absolutely right, Dan. He high-pointed that well. He used his body well. He managed to keep his feet in bounds. That's why he's their, uh, he, That's why he's one of their leading receivers. He's a senior for, for West Orange Warriors. And that's going to bring up first down, first and goal from the six-yard line for the West Orange Warriors. What a, what a pass to by Tyler Huff to stay in the pocket and deliver it. And that's something West Orange has got to do. You know, Apopka's going to play them man coverage. And any time they play you man, you've got to test them. We've got a flag on the field. I think they're going to say we've got one too many on the field for the West Orange Warriors. So Tyler Staubach is going to come off the field. He's usually out there on defense. Now, I want you guys to look at number 44, uh, Jack Wells. Excuse me, Alex Wells, whenever he's in, expect the ball to be going right behind him. And once again, they're right behind Jack Well, excuse me, Matt Wells. Anytime you see 44 on the field, expect the ball to be coming right behind him, Dan. He he's a load, man. He he can really create a hole. And that was once again Matthew McDoom taking the snap and, and running behind him. All right. Now we got Schwalbach coming back on the field. I guess he's going to go both ways tonight. That's Tyson Schwalbach, number seven. Well, this might be their big plan as well. You know, in short yardage. Yeah, they used him as kind of a flex, like a tight end. All right, Tyler Huffing gun. Second and goal from the seven. This is where we might see a little bit more of a true RPO, which we are. He decides to go with the and handoff Apopka's there. his defense I mean, is all over him. You know, Dan, we, we've watched a lot of football already this year. Apopka sideline to sideline, they have just as much speed as anybody, really, in the, in the area. Well, you know, Apopka is built on speed, you know, both sides of the ball. They, they have been for a number of years now, um, you know, even with their offense. Everything with a single-wing offense is about misdirection and speed and getting guys on corners. But um, when you start taking a look at – a multiple type offense like like West Orange is running, you're still trying to get guys in space, and I think that's what they're trying to do right now is see if they can find some of the weaknesses in that Apopka defense. And I can tell you, there's not many. Tyler Huff's going to throw go for the touchdown here. Pass to Jaden Gibson is going to be incomplete. I expect the field goal unit to come on here. And that wasn't a bad pass by Tyler. You know that was that was exactly what you want to do. You want to throw it to a spot. Receiver looked like he took an inside release. I think Tyler was looking to get a little bit more of an outside release, and uh, that's just a timing issue. They'll get corrected. All right, West Orange is going to attempt what looks like a 27-yard field goal here. And it, it is blocked. And it's blocked. And it actually... Actually hit the crossbar there. Um, unfortunate for West Orange to not come out of that with any points after a turnover, Dan. And, and but if correct me if I'm wrong, was that McDoom kicking the field goal? That's exactly who I was no, double checking I, because I, I had this on number eleven down there. I had to look twice, and uh, you know they obviously they used him apparently all over the field. He's still out there on defense now. <laughs> this guy does it all. Well, I'll tell you, you mentioned this. You know, was this a missed opportunity by West Orange? You know, given, given the a pop of the ball back without coming away with any points here, you know, does that play a factor later in this game? That's yet to be determined. But, you know, Popka's got his work cut out for him. They've got to drive 80, 80 yards right now. We've got about a minute to go left in the first quarter. A Popka's going to take over at the 20-yard line. And the West Orange defense is still really, really doing a good job up front. That was the big question mark for West Orange. How would their defensive line be able to hold up? And Josiah Robinson's running the ball hard. Just I'm, can't find any day room, daylight at this point. I'm actually really impressed with this uh, Chris Fica, uh, his, his, whose brother is the offensive line coach. He's only a sophomore, but, I mean, 
he's playing the tackle position. And he's really holding his own right now. Well, he's playing that three technique, which is usually the beef of the defense, and uh, you're usually taking a double team just about every play. All he's right, it's actually gonna out on a five oh. technique right now. All right, here we go. Second down and six. Apopka is just going to try to really bulldoze straight ahead and get a couple extra yards here. It's going to bring up another third down for Apopka. This is where we, damn, we've got to ask the question, do, do you throw the ball or do you just keep it on the ground and pound? You know, and it may not even be a throwing. You know, we may see a reverse here. We may see uh, one yeah. of that wing back coming around and, and, and a little smoke and mirrors by Apopka. But, you know, they're going to have to air it out a little bit. You know, they don't have a lot of experience as far as throwing the ball, but Coach Olson's, Coach, Coach Olson's offense is going to give a couple wrinkles in this game because lining up and running the ball may not get it done. All right, Dan, that's going to bring up the end of the first quarter. We're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, we'll have the second quarter and more action for you right here on the Varsity Sports Network. Hello, everybody. Bobby Latmore here for Varsity Sports Network, bringing you all the action here tonight. Thank goodness to Heat Ziegler and Dan LaForest for all their play-by-play -play action. Going to give you a little heads up tonight on a great sponsor that we've got tonight, Gorilla Corporate Electric, Electric here in the Orlando area. Everything from generators, if you have issues with generators, if you have issues with commercial or residential electrical work, give Gorilla Corp Electric a call. Call Frank at 407 791 Zero three seven eight. They have 24-hour service. So no matter what time of day, if you have any kind of electrical problems, give Frank a call at Gorilla Corp Electric. Back to the show, folks. Back to Heath Ziegler and Dan LaForce on tonight's broadcast here. VSN Orlando, the game of the week. All right, welcome back to Winter Garden, Florida. Apopka on third down is going to be stopped. which is going to bring up fourth down for the Apaka Blue Darters. It looks like West Orange is going to be able to get off the field again. And, man, the defense for West Orange has definitely shown up tonight. McDoom will be back to receive for the West Orange Warriors. You know, once again, Heath, we're looking at great field position for, for, for West Orange. Starting this second quarter, will they be able to take any type of advantage of this? Oh, what a great punt here. Nice hang time. McDoom's going to McDoom's gonna muff it a little bit. He picks it up. And he's broken free. Here goes McDoom up the sideline. Guys, this could go to the house. He's going to be out of bounds at, it looks like, the 32-yard line. Man. McDoom, how did he not get tackled there? He shook that one. Well, I'll tell you what, he found that die light, but, um, you know, we're looking at speed versus speed. And uh, Apopka, Apopka was lucky they were able to catch up with him because he had a clear shot down that sideline. McDoom already has three on the year where he's taking him to the house. And, I mean, we're going to hear the name McDoom quite a bit tonight. I mean, he's kicking field goals, he's playing defense, he's returning punts, he's on offense. I mean, this guy's all over the field. West Orange is going to take over at the 32-yard line. We'll bring up first and 10. We're just underway here in the second half. The score is 0-0. We're in Winter Garden, Florida. It's a beautiful Friday night under the lights. Dan, you can't get much better weather, man. I, I know we've talked about the weather ad nauseum, but, man, this is a perfect weather for football. Well, it's definitely not September, so, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a little easier to take. But, you know, does West Orange take a shot here is what we're going to find out. McDoom. This might be a great time to go deep. Yep. Looks like a little pass out to McDoom. He's going to shake one. He's going to get about nine, eight, nine yards there. I like that. I like that. Get, they're trying to get the ball out quick, get it in their playmaker's hands. I mean, Doom's definitely one of those players. And that was, uh, that was Curtis Spivey, senior linebacker on that tackle as well. Wearing, wearing number 11, correct? Wearing number 11. That was a surprise for us all tonight. We didn't know if Jaquan Loman was going to suit up, and all of a sudden, 11 strutting around on the sideline during warm-up. So... Yeah, unfortunately, Jaquan Loman's not playing tonight, and Curtis Bybee is wearing number 11. All right, number 44 is in the game, so you know what that means. Right behind him, here they come. And there's a break. And there you go. Anytime you see 44, they're going to be running it right behind him. All 
All right, Dan, looks like West Orange's offense is seeing, showing some signs of life here, moving the ball. The ball's going to be at the 17-yard line, first and 10 for the Warriors. You got Jack Main and Jaden Gibson down at the bottom of your screen spread out wide. You got number 44, the, the big load. He's in the game, and guess what? They're running right behind him again, Dan. And Jade Gibson had an outstanding Ball game last week. He had three receptions for 110 yards and a touchdown. Seems to be a popular target for <laughs> Tyler Huff as well. Yeah, I think they're going to look. I mean, they, they tried going to him uh, last time they were down uh, in the red zone. Let's we'll see if they try it again. But we have a blue daughter down on the field, an injured blue daughter. All right, guys, we're going to step away for just a moment while they uh, take some attention here to uh, the Apocalypse Blue Daughter. When we come back, we'll uh, have more of the second quarter here, right here on the Varsity Sports Network. The best part of my job is helping people realize not only their dreams, but also their potential. My name is Dan LaForest, and I am a wealth advisor with Security Financial Management. No matter how good you may be at a skill, it's always important to have a coach to help you refine those skills and gain plan for the next challenge. Helping clients realize the process will give them the confidence of knowing that we have taken the appropriate steps to protect themselves and their families. Oh well. All right, welcome back to Winter Garden, Florida for the Apopka Blue Darters versus the West Orange Warriors. I'm Heath Ziegler. I'm joined here by Dan LaForest. Dan, uh, we've got an injured player uh, for Apopka down here, but uh, let's talk about the West Orange offense here. Um, they're starting to show some signs of life. They're, uh, obviously, they've got Alex Wells in, and they're able to obviously run the ball behind him. They're trying to quickly get the ball out to their playmakers, but this is definitely uh, more of, I guess, more of what Coach Granado likes to see on the offensive side of the ball. And the young man uh, for a for a popka that is uh, number 15, Arian Kanahute, defensive lineman. He is uh, unfortunately, Dan. We've seen that kind of walk coming off the field. That doesn't look good for him. No, no. It looks like it could be a sprained ankle. So hopefully he'll be fine, and they can get him. Uh, they can get him iced up, and hopefully get ready for next week. But uh, I doubt we're going to see him the rest of the game. All right, Tyler Huff. They're going to go back to that pistol formation here. They got trips up top, and they've got their uh, their number one receiver, Jaden Gibson, down at the bottom of your screen. Do you think they're going to go ISO here down to the bottom here? I mean, I, I think they've done a really nice job playing chess with Apopka right now. Apopka's kind of guessing to see what they're doing. Tyler Huff, little, oh, little play action, little little, little quick pass over there to Justin Goodman. That's going to be incomplete. It's going to, it's going to bring up a third down, Dan. And I mean, this is where, um, this is where West Orange kind of stalled last time. Yeah, and unfortunately, that's one of those plays that you, you really hope you complete. I mean, that would have put them in short, uh, third and short. Which, yeah, because which would give them a much better situation going into this next play. Yeah, you're right, Dan. I mean, even if they don't get the first there, if they, I mean, third and three, third and two is way more manageable. Opens up your playbook to a lot more options. But they're also playing man. They're playing man up. They're so, playing uh, man up. They got twins out there, Huff and Gun. I took a. I took a shot. They may take a shot to this. Uh, to the short side. Nope. Oh, there's holding there that yeah. they did not call. Ooh. Number 95. Yeah. Popka. Yeah, they definitely got away with one there. And uh, Tyler Huff, uh, quick to quick to leave the pocket there. I thought he actually had quite. Uh, he could have stepped up in the pocket, but he bailed on it early. And that, then again, you see that sideline to sideline speed by the Apopka Blue Darters, which well, is going to bring up fourth down here. Number 95, Alex Meredith, was making a beeline for, for Tyler Huff. Dan, and, what do you think about this here, their, their decision to go for it here? I, mean, I, think you, I think you have to. I mean, you missed a field goal I would earlier. Take, I would take the points. You're on the short side of the field. I would try to take but the points. points aren't guaranteed. You know, they, they already missed they're, one. They're not guaranteed, but this game already has proven that. I mean, we're still 0-0 with eight minutes to go. I mean, I think, I think points right here. Are something that you got to get. You got to walk away with something here. Tyler Huff, he's going to throw it deep here to Jaden. He's got it. He catch it, but he was out of bounds. Mm. Jaden Gibson makes a great catch. It's a good throw, but unfortunately, 
just a little minutes to go. I mean, I think I think points right here are something that you got to get. You got to walk away with something here. Tyler Huff, he's going to throw it deep here to Jaden. He's got it. He catch it, but he was out of bounds. Mm. Things that you have to do in in a game like this. Um, you know, it puts a Popka who's struggled so far on offense in a much deeper hole. Um, and, and you know, Popka's got to find its balance. It's got to find its way to get some get down here and and, and, and get some first downs. All right, a Popka's going to take over on the 15 yard line. Tyson Schwal back in on the tackle there for the West Orange Warriors. He's all over the field. Um, West Orange's defense, once again, kind of stepping up here. Apopka, Apopka with that offense, it's really it's a lot of misdirection. You know, you, you really have to be disciplined when you play against a single wing offense, Dan. You know, that was Josiah Robinson fighting for three and a half yards as well. So, you know, the big question you and I both had was what was West Orange's defense how were they stacked up to, to play against this physical Apopka offense? And I think I think West Orange is answering that question fairly well so far early in this game. Ooh. Yeah, Josiah Robinson there on the carry. It's going to pick up the first down for the Apopka Blue Darters. And once again, Josiah Robinson's going to be the workhorse for the Blue Darters. It's starting to look that way. And, and, and I'll tell you what, he was he was one finger away from breaking that. So, you know, that's what you can expect from a Popka is they'll keep pounding and pounding, and all of a sudden they break one for 40 or 50. So far that hasn't happened, but that was that was one of those plays that we got really close on. Dan, I think this one might be coming back. It looks like a holding is going to be called on the Apopka Blue Darters, if I'm correct. Personal foul, chop block against. I guess one of the one of the Warriors went low. I guess on. Uh, and I tell you, they frown against that chop block anymore. You cannot go below the belt on any player and not get a flag anymore. I, 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 Dan, I was just going to say, I'm standing here looking at my producer. I don't know if I've ever seen a chop block called on the defense. Have you? I guess we missed that. I was, I was completely puzzled there when he said it was on the Warriors. I don't know if I've ever seen that in all my years of calling games and watching football. Well, I, I did see some of these guys, what we used to call submarine dive on the offensive line. So maybe they're picking that up. And Josiah Robinson again with the ball slipped. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. Josiah Robinson seems to be the workload, getting the workload tonight for the Blue Darters, Heath. All right, we got six minutes left to go. Still 0 0 here in Winter Garden, Florida. You know, in, the, in previous games, we've seen Curtis Spivey get the ball here. You know, Popka should start rotating some running backs here before long. Oh. Man. Tyson Swalback with an outstanding tackle. Spivey get the ball here. You know, Popka should start rotating some running backs here before long. Oh. Man. Seconds left in the second quarter. When we come back, we're going to have more action here. It's still 0-0 right here in Winter Garden, Florida. You're watching the Varsity Sports Network. I'm Angel Krausen, and I'm with the A-Team of Charles Ruttenberg Realty. We're located in delightful downtown DeLand, and we service all of Central Florida. Our team is here to serve you for all of your real estate needs, whether you're buying, selling, or looking to invest, there is no time like the present to sell your existing home and buy your new one with the A-Team. Call me, Angel Carlson, so the A-Team can deliver your dream today.
All right, we are back here. Third down for Apopka. Man, it looks like they're going to fight and possibly get this one, Dan. It's going to be another first down. And and once again, is that uh, Josiah Robinson? That's again? Josiah Robinson once again carrying the ball. And, and yeah, that's going to be tight. You know, did he get the first? It looks like they're going to give him first down. Yeah, that's where that weight room in the offseason, even though they probably didn't have much of it with this COVID-19, but that's where, uh, you know, really, really strength matters. Get those extra two yards to get the first down for the Blue Darters. Well, this is what we were talking about earlier. You know, Popka's offense is built to just pound, pound, pound. All of a sudden, they're going to break one, and that almost was, I mean, that was a long run. That was a 10-yard run, enough to get them that first down. Dan, correct me if I'm wrong here. West Orange's defense getting a little tired here. Looks like, like you said, Apopka is able to just keep pounding, pounding, pounding straight ahead. Well, you know, they're getting, they're, they're starting to rotate some. That was Anthony jo uh, Joseph that came in and, and ran that ball. So, you know, another getting an eight-yard carry on first down does not hurt your chances, especially with this type of offense. You know, it looks like Apopka is finally putting together that drive, and West Orange's defense could be getting a little bit tired. I'm surprised I don't see any substitutions on the Warrior side of the ball here. He's met right at the line. It's gonna, uh, it's gonna be close, Dan. I'm not sure if they're gonna get it, but it looks like we'll have to see where the spot is on whether or not they get the first here. We might be looking at a measure here. They're gonna stop the clock to. Oh, they're gonna go ahead and give it to him. That's gonna be another first down for the Apopka Blue Darters, with three minutes and 54 seconds left in the half. Apopka's trying to mount a drive here to put some points on the board. It is still 0-0 right here in Winter Garden, Florida. Once again, no substitutions on the West Orange side of the ball. They're keeping their, they're keeping their same guys out there. Oh, man, we've got a fumbled snap there. Intended for Josiah Robinson. He, luckily, he picks it up, and he's going to lose about six yards there. It's going to bring up second and 16 for the Apopka Blue Darters. Dan, we call those drive killers, man. What do you, Nothing worse than that because they were really clicking. Well, that's not exactly the ideal situation <laughs> for Apopka, the way they run their O, but um, I, I don't think Apopka is going to get away from their game plan at this point. You know, I think they believe they're starting to wear down that defense. And they're going to try them. Another fumble oh, snap, and it looks like the Warriors are going to get it. Yeah, that was Anthony Joseph Mis mishandled that snap. And West Orange has got that ball, first and ten. Josira Jones there on the fumble recovery for the West Orange Warriors. And, and that is two... Two costly, costly turnovers for the Apopka Blue Darters. And West Orange, this is where you really need to do something. With two minutes and 38 seconds to go in the half, you got to think Coach Granado is going to have to dial something up here to get some points on the board. Even if you can just get three before the half, I think that would be something to hang your hat on because here we are still tied up 0-0 with 2.38 left. we got Tyler Huff in the pistol. We've got Jeremy Rudolph Jr. in the on mo uh, he's gonna try one deep here. It's a good throwing ball to Jack Main. Jack Main is gonna score. Jack Main is gonna score. That's a touchdown for the senior receiver. He will not be denied. Jack Main on the reception there. A good good thrown ball by Tyler Huff. And I tell you what, that was a heck of an effort by Jack Main. Really you know, they were hanging on to him by dear life. Way to fight through that tackle and get it into the end zone. I really liked how they used Rudolph there on that, that jet sweep motion look. It really froze the linebackers, gave them that single high coverage, and uh, Jack Main comes down with a beautiful catch. And that'll be a 31-yard touchdown for Jack Main and Tyler Huff. They connect. It's 6-0. The point after attempt is good. That'll make it 7-0 with 2 minutes and 26 seconds left here in Winter Garden, Florida. West Orange on the board first, Dan. You know, and, and looking at this with 2.26 left in, in, the, in, the, in the first half, did you ever think we would be in an Apopka-West Orange game and be 
No, not at all. All of a sudden, we have our first score with almost two minutes left to the halftime. All right, with that, we're going to go to a quick break here. When we come back, we're going to have the rest of the, sec uh, rest of the first half here. You're, you're watching the Varsity Sports Network. The best part of my job is helping people realize not only their dreams, but also their potential. My name is Dan LaForest, and I am a wealth advisor with Security Financial Management. No matter how good you may be at a skill, it's always important to have a coach to help you refine those skills and game plan for the next challenge. Helping clients realize the process will give them the confidence of knowing that we have taken the appropriate steps to protect themselves and their families. All right, welcome back to Winter Garden, Florida. You are watching the Varsity Sports Network. I am Heath Ziegler, joined by my co-host here, Dan LaForest. West Orange on the board for 7-0. We've got Mr. McDoom back to kick off for the West Orange Warriors. Here we go. It's going to be a short kick, definitely returnable. A great return by the Blue Darters. It's going to get them out to about the 37-yard line where Apopka will take over. It'll be first and 10 from the 37. And, D uh, Dan, there's not really a hurry-up offense uh, in the Blue Darter offense like that I see. So how, what do you do with two minutes left here before half? I mean, are you going to have to just keep it on the ground? And Well, you, I'm sure Coach Rolson and his staff have game plan for this. But, you know, two, two, two minutes is still quite a bit of time. Um, if you're using the sidelines and whatnot. But, um, you know, I don't expect them to do anything different here for the first few plays. All right, a pop is going to take over here. First and ten. Keandre Jones on the carry. A direct snap to him that's going to pick up. I think he's going to get the first down here, Dan. And once again, you know, they got to the edge. They were able to turn the corner, got out of bounds to stop the clock. So I think that's going to move the chains. They have yet to. They Looks have yet like to they may it. measure it. First down. Nope, first down. Is that, that might be Keandre Jones. That's one of his first carries of the night, I believe. And like you said, they're going to use the boundary as their friend. I mean, that's the only way a pop can really get a uh, clock manage this. And it looks like they're still running the clock here. That, so that's what you get with the home, uh, the home clock official. All right, a pop is going to pick up about four there on the carry. That, that looked like Javen Robinson. Yeah, that was Javen Robinson. They're starting to use some new guys here with the uh, for the Blue Darters. They're kind of mixing it up. All right, that's going to bring up second down and seven, about midfield, a minute 29 and counting down here. Javen Robinson again getting around the corner there. He got close to the first time that time, Heath. He did, and, you know, that's a Coach Rolson staple. He loves keeping the ball on his side of the field. They, they literally love to work that right hash. And he loves pulling those big guards like Joshua Campbell, getting out on that outside, seeing if they can seal that end and get the guys on the corner. So he did get out of bounds. That will stop the clock. There's a minute 16 left in the half. We're going to have a looks like looks like we're going to have a timeout here. We're going to step away for a quick break. When we come back, we're going to have the last minute and 16 seconds in the first quarter here from Winter Garden, Florida. I'm Heath Ziegler, joined by Dan LaForce. We'll see you in just a moment here on the Varsity Sports. Does your electrical issues look like this? Do you know what each wire goes to? Doing it yourself can cost you a lot of money. It's time to call Gorilla Electric at 407-791-0378 for all your electrical needs 24 hours a day. They handle panel repairs and installations, grounding and troubleshooting, home services, and upgrades. Gorilla Electric services all of Central Florida. Call Gorilla Electric today at 407-791-0378, 24 hours a day.
right, welcome back to Winter Garden, Florida. Apopka is going to take a direct snap here to Javen Robinson. That didn't look like the line was set there, Dan. I think that's just going to come back. Yeah, that was a false start. Something didn't look right there with uh, the snap count. And that's not going to make Coach Rolson very happy there. That's going to back them up, make this a lot longer of a third down. After the three, it brings up third and nine. You know, it's one of the problems with this offense, too, is these guys in their head are thinking there's a minute left. we got to hurry up. But they can't go anywhere without the ball. Yeah, a minute left to go. 7 nothing. West Orange on top. Apopka's trying, scratching and clawing here, trying to get some points on the board before half. But the West Orange defense has come to play tonight. So far, pitching a shutout. Another good stop, and I, I would be surprised if this Granado want to take a timeout here and try to get the ball back. It looks like looks like Coach Granado is pretty content with going to half here, seven nothing. Um, I wouldn't be surprised here if uh, a Popke just punts it away. Now you know the playmaker McDoom's going to be back to receive here. And that could be another reason why Coach Granado decided to just kind of sit tight here. They're going to get a return because the clock's going to allow it. And they won't have a whole lot of time beyond that. So, Twenty-five seconds left. Coach Rolson's either going to let this run down and take the penalty or call a timeout. I'm not sure what he's going to do, but it's fourth down at midfield. And they are going to take a timeout. It's just going to leave only 16 seconds. Oh, excuse me. They are, they are going to take the delay of game. Heath, a lot of people here in the area also want to know what's going on with the Ocoee the Brantley game. Right now in the second quarter, Ocoee is leading Lake Brantley 13 to 7. Yeah, I, my producer's in my ear here telling me uh, we've seen a couple strange things tonight, Dad. I have not seen that before either. We've had. Uh, we just took a we just took a five yard uh, delay of game penalty and then he takes the timeout. I just don't know why not just take the timeout, you know, with one second left on the play clock. But uh, it's all good. So all right, when we come back, we're gonna have uh, the last 16 seconds. We're gonna see one more punt and one more McDoom return right here on the Varsity Sports. Network. Southern Equipment Rental is your number one stop for all of your equipment rental and sales needs. Conveniently located in Deland and Norman Beach, Florida. We offer construction equipment for rent and sale. Our factory trained and certified technicians are available to help you choose the right equipment that best fits your needs. Whether you're looking for a wood chipper, a ditch witch, bobcat, or any other type of equipment, we can help. Call us today to learn more. <laughs> All right, welcome back to Winter Garden, Florida. A pop is going to have to punt this away. 16 seconds left. McDoom is back to receive. All right, they're going to play for a return here. That was about a – oh. Oh, over, and he muffed Over it. his head. He's got a – They're going to call it a touchback. They didn't stop the clock. They finally stopped the clock with 4.7 seconds, Heath. Now, this is interesting. I did not see him go down there. Right, but they're spotting the ball at the goal line. I didn't – Dan, help me out here. I did not see the player go down. They're spotting the ball at the goal line. Did they think that he actually called a fair catch? They're saying he called a fair catch on that. Why would he? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think McDoom would call a fair catch when really that was their only hope to have anything, make anything happen there was um, Regardless, uh, the ball is going to be spotted literally on the well, goal line. Well, th this thing makes things a little bit different. Yes, it certainly does, Dan. You know, w West Orange mishandled the, the, the snap here. We could be talking about a tied ball game. And we got another timeout. So as we try to figure this out, <laughs> we might step away here for a quick break. Uh, when we come back, to, we'll see the last 4.7 seconds left, and West Orange is going to have a little work to do uh, to get out of this half with the lead 7 nothing right here on the Varsity Sports Network. The best part of my job is helping people realize not only their dreams, but also their potential. My name is Dan LaForest, and I am a wealth advisor with Security Financial Management. 
No matter how good you may be at a skill, it's always important to have a coach to help you refine those skills and gain plan for the next challenge. Helping clients realize the process will give them the confidence of knowing that we have taken the appropriate steps to protect themselves and their families. Hey, when are we back here? All right, so West Orange is going to have to take one more snap here, and they're just going to try to sneak it, and I think that's going to do it, Dan. That's going to run the clock out. So we're going to go to halftime here with the West Orange Warriors up 7 to nothing on the Apopka Blue Darters. And, Dan, give me a takeaway here from the first half. What do you see? Well, I think we learned a lot about West Orange here in the first half. You that know, deep, that deep. They, their defense is playing outstanding. Their offense has been showing us the same thing they've been showing us the last several weeks. You know, Coach Granado's got these West Orange Warriors playing very, very well. And, um, you know, they're ready for this game. Now, Apopka, Apopka obviously has – Apopka's Apopka. You know, we're, we're going <laughs> to see Apopka. Apopka doesn't change. They run the ball. They play hard defense. I, I'm, I'm interested to see what kind of adjustments they make at halftime to, to hopefully open up some opportunities for that running game here in the second half. Yeah, this isn't a Popka Blue Darter team that was in the state championship, the 8A state championship last year. Obviously, they, they, they've, you know, they've lost a few of those guys from that team, and obviously the big story tonight is without Jaquan Lohman, this offense looks completely different. Um, uh, you know, I think that a Popka is going to have, like you said, make some adjustments, but I think at some point they're going to have to use the middle of the field and do a little play action like a tight end dump or something because right now West Orange is able to put nine guys in the box, pin their ears back, and come straight forward. So... I mean, I, I think that, you know, they're going to have to get a little creative because West, Orange, West Orange's defense has shown up tonight, and that was our big question mark of the night before the game started. You and I talked about this. What would West Orange look like? Uh, how would their defense, you know, be able to, to, to show up and respond to Apopka's single-wing offense? And we've definitely seen that so far. All right, welcome back to Winter Garden, Florida on the Varsity Sports Network. I'm Heath Ziegler, joined by Dan LaForest. The second half is about to get underway. Make Doom to kick off. Apopka's going to receive. It's going to be a returnable kick for the Blue Darters. And it's a decent return out to about the 32-yard line where the Blue Darters are going to take over. And, Dan, before we went to half, Apopka started to get a little bit of offense clicking when they started playing the outside game and uh, really getting towards the boundary. I think I would expect to see more of that. It seemed to really uh, loosen up the defense uh, for, for, for West Orange. So I'd like to see more of that out of the, in the second half. Anything you'd like to see Apopka adjust to here? Well, I mean, I think we covered that before. You know, again, Apopka's offense is like playing chess. They're going to do the same things over and over, and then all of a sudden they're going to they're going to slide something behind you. I think we're going to see a little bit more misdirection, and, and we might see some short passes into the flat and maybe hitting the tight end just to loosen up those linebackers a little bit. All right, Apopka takes over first and 10. I saw a little movement up front. They're not going to call it, and another blue darter has slipped, and I've seen that happen a couple times tonight. And that's Javen Robinson lost his footing there, you know, and, and again, the, you know, that's them trying to get out to the corner. These guys are going to be very careful. It's starting to, uh, you know, now we're in set set. We might get a little bit of dew on the grass. Chris Vicka, number 52, the interior lineman, is only a sophomore for West Orange. He's having a great game. I've been watching him all night, and he's, he's really been able to, to disrupt a Popka up front. He only a sophomore, too. It's like, you like to see that. Well, it's baptism by fire. Yeah. Javen Robinson again on the carry. He's going to bump it outside. It's going to be brought down by Jaden Floyd, the defensive back senior for West Orange Warriors. That's going to get them right back to the original line of scrimmage. It's going to be third and we'll call it nine. Yeah, not ideal for the Apopka defense <laughs> to be in third and nine. Yeah. And this is definitely not two, uh, two down territory or four down territory. Let's see if the West Orange Warriors can hold them and get off the field again. Third and nine. Apopka in white, West Orange in blue. If and you're starting to see the corners play a little bit wider now on that defense. And we got another fumbled snap. That's the third fumbled snap, third month snap we've seen tonight. And I think that's, that's from, obviously, 
Jaquan Loman's usually taking the load, usually taking the majority of the snaps. These guys don't get as many looks as they've gotten as, as they got. Orange and blue. If you're starting to see the corners play a little bit wider now on that defense. And we got another fumbled snap. That's the third fumbled snap, third muff. And let these things kind of happen. But the first thing you got to do is secure that ball off the snap. All right, so Apopka's going to punt it away. McDoom back to receive. McDoom only a junior. And he's just going to let this one bounce, guys. And the pop, or excuse me, West Orange will take over at their own 29-yard line. And that was a nice kick by uh, the Apopka punter, Kobe Vasquez. Yeah, it really was. Obviously, it's going to make it a longer field here for West Orange. Coach Granado's offense is going to come out here. And uh, anything you'd like to see out of West Orange's offense? Any adjustments you'd like to see? Well, I, I think they started doing it uh, early in or toward the middle of the second quarter is opening it up, trying to spread the ball out and thin out that Apopka defense a little bit. You know, Apopka's solid, especially in the interior, and they played a lot of man coverage. And any time you've got a defense playing man, you, you've got to make them pay. West Orange there on the carry. It's going to get maybe a yard. It's going to bring up a second down and we'll call it nine. And Traverian Barnes once again in on that tackle. Outstanding linebacker for Apopka. Okay, they're going to give him about two there on the carry. That'll bring up second and eight for West Orange. Tyler Huff and shotgun on their own 30-yard line. Slips a couple tackles. Pretty good run there with not really much doing there. It's going to get uh, two or three more yards. It's going to bring up third and five. And this is where I think we might see, you know, that Jaden Gibson-Tyler Huff connection. Maybe, you know, maybe look at Jack Main here. Slips a couple tackles. Pretty good run there with not really much doing there. It's going to get uh, two or three more yards. Run, which tells me once again that, They've got to be very careful because these outside threats for West Orange and they are, can get it done. They are jamming up on Jaden here. Jaden Gibson's got a really good look. If they want to, if they want to try a shot here, it looks like Granada's changing the play here. He might, he might like what he sees out here on the bottom of your screen. And number twenty-one for Apopka, Nakai Martinez, is one of the best corner guys in the area. But uh, I'll tell you what, playing man coverage, uh, play after play, gets a little tiring. So surprised they went with kind of a little inside draw there. It's going to bring up fourth down and four, and I don't think Coach Granado is going to take a chance here. They've got to punt this away. Yeah, especially as well as their defense is playing. Let's put a pop a little bit deeper into their own territory and and uh, wait for that next opportunity and hold on to that seven nothing lead. Very conservative play calls. You got to wonder if some of that Boone fourth quarters in the back of Granado's mind there. He's not uh, wanting to uh, have any turnovers. And uh, West Orange has done a great job tonight at not turning the ball over and really managing the game well. That's really Apopka's, um, you know, Apopka's has two, two turnovers to West Orange's zero. Well, you got to give credit to Apopka as well. You know, third and short, you know, running that draw play isn't necessarily a bad thing because they're looking for the pass. But, um, you know, give credit to Apopka for sniffing that out. Nakai Martinez was back to return there. They just, they're going to let that one go. And that's going to bring up first and ten for the Blue Darters at the 20. I'll tell you what, we really need to see Apopka slow things down here a little bit and, uh, and to secure that football. Um, they're, they're trying to do a, a few different things on offense that have been successful. They've gotten on the corners. They're utilizing that speed that they're so, uh, so, they've done so well over the past. But again, right. they're going to have to do a few things differently here in the second half to move on this West, on this West Orange defense. All right, first and 10 for Apopka from the 20. They're going to get a couple yards here. It's going to bring up second and eight. With about seven and a half minutes left here in the third quarter, Apopka's got to get some points, Dan. Got number one, Anthony Joseph, coming back into the game for Apopka. So they're keeping these running backs, switching out, keeping them, keeping them rested up and, and fresh. Well, 
Wow. And that's not good. Josiah Robinson, uh, short game there, but anytime you got a flag coming from there, it could be holding. We do have a penalty marker on the field. We could speculate, but let's just wait and see what we got here. Uh, Dan, you think it's a holding here? Another chop block on the, on the defense. defense. This yeah. is the second Again. time tonight. I'm not, I've never, I don't know if this is just me, but I've never seen this before. Yeah, and, you know, again, with this Apopka offense. Look at Coach Granado. Look at, he, they, he's a <laughs> They typically, they're, they're, the defensive is, is being taught to, to kind of go low on this offensive line and plug those holes up, not necessarily getting blocked, but to even get on the ground. And I think that's what they're calling them on is they're going below the belt there, which can be dangerous. You know, that's not something that's, uh, that's taught really, uh, especially on the offensive side of the ball anymore. Josiah Robinson for Apopka still churning his legs. Yeah, he's going to be brought down by a swarm of West Orange Warriors there, but he's going to get six yards on it. I mean, that's a, that's a good run. I was going to bring up second and four, and this is kind of what Apopka needs on first down is that six-yard gain, that seven-yard gain. That's where they can really get into, you know, their comfort zone. Well, and this is what they try to do in the first half and maybe tire out that West Orange defense a little bit. They're locking up, and then all of a sudden, if they can weaken that wall a little bit, once again, hopefully we'll see a Popka burst out for those 20, 30, 40-yard gains. Anthony Joseph on the carry there brings up third and short. Five and a half minutes left in the third. This game is is going quite quick, quite quickly, Dan. And that's obviously the the Apopka Blue Daughter style. I'm sorry, Warrior fans. That brings up their Well, I'll tell you what. You know, even on the West Orange side, they're not throwing the ball as much as we expected them coming yeah. into this game. They have played ball control. Okay, big third down here right around midfield for the Apopka Blue Daughters. Can West Orange get off the field here? Let's find out. Oh. A big stop by West Orange. They're going to say he got back to the line of scrimmage. Dan, it's decision time. Fourth, yeah, fourth, David, fourth. David Robinson was looking for that hole and really couldn't squeeze it in there. I, you know, I, I think they have to punt it here, Heath. Yeah, they do. Coach Rolson is livid on the other sideline there. I can see him. He is not happy with his guys that they had second and second and four and could not get the four yards with two plays. The day that Apopka can't get four yards with two plays, uh, I didn't think we'd see it here tonight, but uh, obviously without Jaquan Lohman, Apopka's definitely struggling. Their offense has, seems very sluggish. It seems like it's not quite the blue darter, the typical blue darter offense. And once again, make Doom back to receive the playmaker for the Warriors. Well, one of the things, too, is last week with Jones, that was one of Apopka's Achilles heels was, was the penalty. So... I could tell Coach Rolson isn't happy because he's not seeing some of those things being taken care of coming into this game with West Orange. McDoom again lets the ball uh, decides not to re not not to uh, receive that. And Dan, I I, I got to ask you, McDoom hasn't decided to receive one since that little mess up right before half. I mean, I don't know if it's in his head, but he's had two very returnable punts, and he's kind of just let them bounce. And I I, I got to wonder if he's if he's uh. You know, that's in the back of his mind. But when we come back, we'll have three minutes and 56 seconds left in the third quarter. You're watching the Varsity Sports Network. All right, 
West Orange takes over, first and 10 from their own 15-yard line. Tyler Huffing gun. He's going to hand it off on a little end around here to McDoom. McDoom's got a little bit of the edge. He's going to get uh, a couple yards there. A lot of effort for very little. And Jaquan Harris, uh, senior defensive back, escorted him out of bounds. You know, again, West Orange has got to test this Apopka defense before they start finding opportunities, and, and they've tried to do that on the ground to see how they're reacting. But at some point here, they've, they've got to stretch the field. And, you know, West Orange is not really taking their time, too. We haven't seen either team really go fast tonight. Uh, Tyler Huff and Pistol. Just a little inside handoff here. Bounces it outside. He's going to get... I think close to the first down, Dan. I think that's going to move chains for the West Orange Warriors. That's a big first down. Well, we've talked all night how fast a pop is, and any time you're going to throw the ball, you have to take that into play. You know, we talked about the safeties for a popka. They don't stay back. They know they can make up ground if they need to, and the only way for West Orange to get them off kilter is to get them to respect the run. But, uh, I, you know, like I said, they know when they need to take their shots. On the other side of the ball, you're right. These guys are controlling the clock. They're taking their time. They're up with a 7 nothing lead. They already know Apopka is going to burn a lot of time. Let's play it on down. Let's play field position, and that could be the strategy right now. All right, Jack Main at the bottom of your screen. Tyler Huff's going to get sacked here, guys. I think that's going to, that's going to be a loss of uh, three or four there. That's going to bring up second down and long. I think they were trying to hit Jack Main again. All right, Jack Main at the bottom of your screen. Tyler Huff's going to get sacked here, guys. I think that's going to that's going to be a loss of uh, three or four there. Jaden Gibson down at the bottom of your screen, second and long here for Tyler Huff in the Warrior offense. And this is where that bubble screen works out really well. You're seeing the Apopka defense starting to spread out. Tyler Huff back to pass. It's like in the middle of the field. Ooh. Wow, dangerous, dangerous throw, trying to connect with McDoom. I think I thought he thought McDoom was going to be somewhere he wasn't. Uh, yeah, it, it definitely looked like he expected him to be more more in the middle of the field there. And Jaquan Harris, therefore, the Blue Darters, uh, could have easily intercepted that. Uh, it looked like he had a beat on it. That would have changed the game. It looked like they were <laughs> trying to run. It looked like Tyler Huff was looking for him to run a little bit flatter of a slant uh, to get in there in, in, in that zone area. But... Um, but that didn't work out this play. All right, it looks like Rolson is going to dial up a little pressure yeah, here. Yeah, they're bringing it. They're bringing it, and uh, Tyler Huff in pistol. He's going to just take a conservative inside handoff. I mean, Dan, I, we cover <laughs> we cover a lot of games, my man, and this is conservative 101 tonight uh, for the West Orange Warriors. Coach Granado is not taking any chances with his seven-point lead because his defense really has been able to stop him. They're, his defense has controlled the tempo with the yeah. Popka's offense. So, you know, you're right. Well, you know, why, why turn the ball over? Uh, but the other side of that is, you know, you play too conservative, it could come back and bite you. And that's what happened to a Popka last it week. Did. It uh, did. Against Jones. You know, Jones, the Popka had that game won with about two minutes left. So, oh, goodness that is the third time West Orange has almost had their punt block and we've got a return here by number 21 for the Blue Darters he's going to be brought down here with a big hit and Nakai Martinez 21 for the Blue Darters once again he's slippery trying to he's slippery he's trying to find some room but uh you know Popka's got pretty good field position here you know they're they're just shy of the 40 they're looking at has almost had their punt block and we've got a return here by number 21 for the Blue Darters. He's going to be brought down here with a big hit. And Nakai Martinez, 21 for the Blue Darters. Popka football is a Popka football. They're yeah. like a pound, pound, pound. And, um, you know, that, that's just, that's just the, the single wing offense. You know, Popka doesn't have a true quarterback by definition. they got a bunch of guys that run and, and, are, and are very fast. Oh, a fumble is picked up by West Orange. West Orange has the ball at the 15 to 12, down to the 12-yard line. That's the third turnover on the night for Apopka. And, and Jonas Polonese Jr. Yeah. <laughs> picked that thing. It bounced right up into his hands. That run and, and, are, and are very fast. 
Oh, a fumble is picked up by West Orange. West Orange has the ball at the 15 to 12, down to the 12-yard line. That's the third turnover on the night. Right now, knowing how tough a Popka's defense is, knowing you are inside the red zone, do you take a shot here and, and try to open this thing up? I think that's. Or are you going to play conservative? That's been the story and of run the night. That ball? Are, are we going to see him take a shot? I expect Granado. I, honestly, I I expect him to be conservative here. Uh, I ha his his play call on third down earlier is telling me a lot. He likes his seven point lead right now, and I think he would love to get obviously make it a two score game here. I tell you what, these linebackers for a pop are tough. Oh, they're going to throw here oh. out, out to McDoom. McDoom's going to get six or seven yards there, which will bring up second down and three. And number 96, Devin Barnes, almost got a piece of that. He came off that edge untouched, and Tyler Huff just barely got it over his fingertips. He's got that quick release. You know, he can get it out quick, but you're right. Could have easily been batted down. Okay, so let's go. We're going to go with second and four here from the Apopka six-yard line. One minute, 15 seconds left in the third quarter here in Winter Garden, Florida. I'm Heath Ziegler, joined by Dan LaForest. This is the game of the week, West Orange Warriors versus the Apopka Blue Darters. Tyler Huff in pistol. Not much doing there, Dan. That's going to back him up a yard or two. It's going to bring up. A third down and six, third down and seven. And West Orange has had kicking problems. We saw that early in the game. You know, does coach want to try to run the ball? Is this two down territory or will they try to kick it up? Multiple things here can happen. We don't, you know, we don't have insight into, into Coach Granado's head, but. Uh, well, you're right. Coach Granado wants to take a minute to think about it. We're going to step away for just a moment here on the Varsity Sports Network. When we come back, we'll have the end of the third quarter and we're going to see if West Orange can make it a two-score game right here on the Varsity Sports Network. The best part of my job is helping people realize not only their dreams, but also their potential. My name is Dan LaForest, and I am a wealth advisor with Security Financial Management. No matter how good you may be at a skill, it's always important to have a coach to help you refine those skills and game plan for the next challenge. Helping clients realize the process will give them the confidence of knowing that we have taken the appropriate steps to protect themselves and their families. Let me know. All right, we are back here in Winter Garden, Florida. It's a big third down here for the Warriors. This is going to be third and five. Tyler Huff in pistol again. Tyson Schwalbach in motion. Huff's going to keep it. He's going to hit Schwalbach. Schwalbach's going to oh, fumble. Oh, fumble going into the end zone there. And, guys, I thought Schwalbach had his, had his first touchdown there. And Nakai Martinez picked that up and, and ran it, brought it back out. You know, is this the momentum of Popkin Deeds? I mean, he's going to hit Schwalbach. Schwalbach's going to oh, oh, fumble. fumble going into the end zone there. And, guys, I thought Schwalbach had his had his on the field and reclaim what, what they want. What a play call, though, to, to run McDoom in motion up top and then have Schwalbach come out here into the flats. The, the entire defense was looking the other direction. That was a, that was a perfectly called play. No, Before, you know, it, it was circumstance. You know, it was just unfortunate circumstance. You know, I, I thought he had scored. And, uh, you know, again, it just shows the toughness of this Apopka defense. They're, they're going to hit you, and you better expect it. Ooh. Good run there and by Javen yeah, Robinson. Javen Robinson again. You know, he's been a workhorse tonight. Looks like he's going to come off the field here. Second and four for the Apopka Blue Darters. Hey, that West Orange defense, they've been bending all night. They haven't broken yet. Apopka's looking to get one missed tackle and take this thing to the house. That's how they do it. Well, if they could stop getting penalties and, and making a few mistakes there, but here we are going into the fourth. 
So going into the fourth quarter here in Winter Garden, Florida, at West Orange High School, the score seven nothing. When we come back, we're going to have the final quarter of the game of the week right here on the Varsity Sports Network. Does your electrical issues look like this? Do you know what each wire goes to? Doing it yourself can cost you a lot of money. It's time to call Gorilla Electric at 407-791-0378 for all your electrical needs 24 hours a day. They handle panel repairs and installations, grounding and troubleshooting, home services and upgrades. Gorilla Electric services all of Central Florida. Call Gorilla Electric today at 407-791-0378 24 hours a day. Okay, welcome back. Apopka is going to be uh, at a second and five here. Excuse me, third and short, third and two. Welcome back to Winter Garden, Florida, for the game of the week, the BSN game of the week right here on the Varsity Sports Network. I'm Heath Ziegler, joined by Dan LaForest. The fourth quarter is underway, Dan, and we have a Apopka Blue Darter team being shut out at the moment. A big third down here, third and short. Let's see what Apopka wants to dial up here. Yeah, third and short is usually in their wheelhouse. And they're going to get it. They're going to move some. It's going to be tough. No, they're going to move the chains here. That'll be that'll be a good first down for Apopka. Yeah, it looks like they've got it. You know, Heath, this is your first game calling on VSN, the Orlando channel. It is. Um, you know, I've had the opportunity to come on a couple different times. Um, you've been great to work with tonight. Yeah, thanks, Dan. I, I enjoy uh, – I'm happy to be part of the new Varsity Sports Network team. Uh, I appreciate you guys bringing me on. It's been a pleasure. And obviously this game uh, – there hasn't been a lot of fireworks in this game, but it is 7-0 with 11 minutes to go in the game, and Apopka just got a first down, a rare first down for them. They have not been able to move the ball all night. Well, again, we want to thank Bobby Latmore, president of Varsity Sports Network. And that defense, man, that, that defensive front for West Orange, that was the big question mark. They came to play tonight. The West Orange Warriors have yeah, now have Apopka now in second and 11. Yeah, Apopka's got to find a way to get the ball out into the flat. They, they've got to throw. They've got to have some type of passing game here. West Orange is not respecting any of the areas. They're bringing 11 players in and, and looking at West Orange right now, they're getting pumped uh, up. They think they every, own Apopka. Every player for West Orange is, is within eight yards of the line of scrimmage right now. Yeah, the safeties are, are literally uh, eight yards back. Uh-oh. Apopka on the edge here. Is that Javen Robinson? And it looks like he got the first. So they're going to move a six once again. But again, I was saying I want to thank Bobby Latmore, uh, president of uh, Varsity Sports Network, for, for not only having us on here, but also creating this environment where we can televise local high school football, not only here in Orlando, but all over the state of Florida. Big shout out to Bobby Latmore for, for everything he's done for Varsity Sports Network. And Joey Pluck has done an amazing job on the cameras tonight. He has given us our <laughs> eyes the entire night. And uh, both of these guys have been wonderful helping us out. Right now, we got a score update. Edgewater and Osceola are tied up in the third quarter. Okay, first and 10 for Apopka, trying to get across midfield. Man, that, that is a risky, risky play. Yeah, that was a lateral. That is a lateral, and Apopka with three turnovers on the night. Um, Josiah Robinson on the receiving end of that couldn't break away. Also, scoring update, Seminole is up 26-3 on Flagler Palm Coast. Also, I noticed earlier, Winter Park is up 35-3 on a Coey in the third quarter. Oviedo. I'm sorry, Oviedo. And Spruce Creek at home is down 14-7 to Orange City University. Daytona Beach Mainland is up 14-0 on DeLand in the third quarter. Look at Paul and Nice just get up in there and cause all types of problems for Apopka. And an update from uh, one of the big robberies across town, the Tuscaloosa Tussle. 
Lake Howell is up 41 to nothing. That's a running clock in the third quarter. All right, this is a huge third down. We have seven minutes to go in the game. Seven minutes and 44 seconds left in this game. The coaches, East River the coaches and are, Lyman. The coaches are, are asking. Currently 21, and 21 up in the uh, third quarter as the well. The fans to get behind the Warriors here. This is a big third down. Can West Orange get off the field? Dan, this might be a passing situation here for the Blue Darters. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the over-under of five was pretty much correct. We've seen two passes by Apopka tonight. Neither of them have gone very well, and I don't think Coach Rolson has a lot of confidence open in field, trying to do that. Open field tackle made by Jamari Jones, the senior for the Warriors, and that's going to put McDoom back to receive. And I'm looking at Coach Granado right now, and he looks like he's telling McDoom to just pretty much get away from it and just let it let it fall. I think that that is a coach's order. We'll see if McDoom wants to return this, but it looks like Granado wants him to just let it fall. Oh, that's a heck of well, a punt. I wouldn't touch it. Yeah. And he's getting awful close for somebody who was told to stay away from it. But <laughs> he sure is. What What is it about that, Dan? You know, Coaches just say, get away from it, get away from it, get away from it. It's like and moths they, to fire. And they, and they never do. They never do. But what a great punt there. That's going to go out at the four-yard line. And this is going to make a long field for West Orange. Yeah, and I'll tell you, you know, with this game being 7 to nothing, anything can happen at any time. While the guys take a water break, we're going to step away right here on the Varsity Sports Network. Does your electrical issues look like this? Do you know what each wire goes to? Doing it yourself can cost you a lot of money. It's time to call Gorilla Electric at 407-791-0378 for all your electrical needs 24 hours a day. They handle panel repairs and installations, grounding and troubleshooting, home services and upgrades. Gorilla Electric services all of Central Florida. Call Gorilla Electric today at 407-791-0378 24 hours a day. down for a popka we got back just in time from commercial break to see a miss handoff there there was a little confusion in the backfield and this is the worst thing that you could have happen if you're west orange why would they go with a little trickeration out of their own end zone right before we went to break did i not just say with a seven nothing game anything can happen at any time and we got a different ball game and here we are we are going to be tied up seven to seven we, and we apologize for coming back so close to the to the uh, to the start of that play there. Um, I hope we, we were able to catch that. But man, it was just a muffed muffed handoff, like an inside little trickeration. They were kind of go with a little jet sweep back door, kind of a counter action. And he dropped it, and a popka fell on it. So here's the all important kick after, and it's, it's going to be good. So we've got a tied ball game, seven seven. And, man, has the air just left this, this stadium right now for the West Orange Warriors? Well, considering the fact we don't have much of a crowd here tonight, obviously we have a few more people here at, in the West Orange uh, part of the, of, of the stadium than we do Apopka, but this isn't the same field that we see typically in previous years where this stadium would be standing room only. It would absolutely. Um, you know, you would have both sides of, of the stadium just absolutely jam-packed. I was here for the Apopka West Orange playoff game six years ago, and and this place was absolutely nuts. But, you know, with that being said, again, this game is different. Right now it's a, it's a brand-new ball game. Apopka's offense is going to do what Apopka's offense does. Both defenses are playing extremely well. It's what happens here in the next six and a half minutes is going to determine who the winner is going to be. Well, this will be the first time that the Warriors will receive a kickoff since the beginning of the game. And honestly, Heath, at this point, I hope it doesn't come down to a field goal for either team. Right. Kobe Vasquez is going to kick it off here. We got a 7-7 tied ball game with six minutes to go in the game. Kobe's kick is away towards McDoom. McDoom will not be able to return this one. That will come out to the 20-yard line where the Warriors will take over first and 10. Dan, it is time 
to see what West Orange can do with six minutes to go in the game. Can they get some points on the board? We finally got a little bit of fireworks, man. We finally got a little bit of excitement. Well, you know, and the thing is, is in the type of offense that West Orange runs, you can be too conservative. And we've seen, Coach, you know, the, the, the West Orange offense be quite, quite a bit conservative here in the last quarter or so. I think they need to open it up. I think they need to challenge Apopka's defense and lo- loosen them up a little bit. You know, yeah. It's going to be a lot, a lot easier for the running game moving into the next I mean, minutes. West Orange has been able to hold Apopka's offense to less than 100 yards right now. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, so why not take a couple shots? Even if you punt it and give it back to him, your defense has been playing great all night long. Yeah. Tyler Huff at quarterback. He's in shotgun. Inside handoff. Wow. Apopka is Javarian fast, Javarian Barnes. I mean, again, <laughs> you know, I, it seems like I've been calling his name all night. He is such a fun player to watch. I mean, a couple shots, even if you punt it and give it back to him, your defense has been playing great all night long. Yeah. Tyler Huff at quarterback. He's in shotgun. Inside handoff. Wow. Apopka is Javarian fast, Javarian Barnes. I mean, again. Barnes <laughs> are really barking here. They, they want – they know with this man coverage that – Every receiver's dream right now is the coverage. That oh, absolutely. You know, I, I remember, you know, when I played quarterback, I used to watch, if we see man coverage, I'd start grinning. Yeah, so this is that look again where they go trips up top. They got Jack Main down here at the bottom of your screen. Tyler Huff and Pistol. Oh, man. Big, big run here for Paul Anise. Paul Anise is going to bust it. This is a playmaker on both sides of the ball. He's going to take it all the way down to – the five-yard line, and he got cowboy collared there, and that's going to be half Happy the distance, distance to the goal. It's going to bring up first and goal for West Orange. Big run here for Paul Anise. Paul Anise is going to bust it. This is a playmaker on both sides of the ball. He's going to take it all the way down to the five-yard line, and he got cowboy collared there. They opened that hole up perfectly. And uh, you're right, Polonese is the kind of kid, man, you put him in space, he's very difficult to bring down. That was about a 77 yard run there for Polonese Jr. That'll pad the stats for you. Huff. Huff and gun. Polonese still in the game. Direct snap to Polonese. Polonese is fumbled. And Apopka has recovered. Apopka's got it. And here we go. Apopka Blue Daughters will take over. This game has come. <laughs> we were complaining that we didn't have Polonese still in the game. Direct snap to Polonese. Polonese is fumbled, and Apopka has recovered. Apopka's got it. And here we go. First jump on it. It's going to be first and 10 Apopka from their own 13-yard line. And typically you're looking for the fireworks from the offensive side (laughs) of the ball. We've seen fireworks on the defensive side of the ball from both teams all night. Warrior fans. But with four, you know, 452 left in this game, Apopka is going to control most of that clock. Can they push it down the field 75 yards? First and 10. little inside run for a couple yards there. The clock is running. Four minutes and 38 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Second and eight. Yeah, Alexis Jones on the stop for West Orange. Apopka's looking for a big play here. They need to break one out here. Bust one loose here. And, and, you know, that's the thing with the Popka. They're always one play away. Another little direct snap. I believe that was also to Javen Robinson. 
Javon Robinson's done a wonderful job tonight, but I'll, I'll give him credit. These guys run 100 miles an hour from that backfield, whether they see a hole or not. They're waiting for that hole to possibly be there when they hit it. All right, guys, it's a big third down for the West Horns Warriors. Jamari Jones is out there trying to psych up the fans here. Jeremy Rudolph, excuse me, uh, Matthew McDoom also asking the fans to get on their feet. Big third down and six for the for uh, Apopka Blue Darters here in their own territory. Oh, it's a it's a muff snap, and Javen Robinson is going to be brought down at the five yard line, and the West Orange defense has refused to let Apopka get any type of offense going tonight. That's going to back them up to about the seven yard line. It's going to bring up fourth down, and here we go. Do you think Coach Granado is going to give McDoom the green light here to return this thing? I think as close as they've gotten, this should be a punt block situation. But this is going to give West Orange outstanding field position as well. With uh, should be about two and a half minutes by the time we get this thing off. Oh wow! All righty, McDoom. A, a hot McDoom, punt. just let it go, let it go, and a popka. It's going gonna, it's gonna to touch the ball here. And, wow, West Orange is going to get the ball at the 37-yard line with two minutes and 31 seconds left in the game. Tie ball game, 7-7. I'm Heath Ziegler. I'm joined by Dan LaForest. We've got a game coming down to the last minutes here, right here on the Varsity Sports Network. This is what you want on Friday Night Lights, man. This is, what you do. This is why you play the game. Well, and the thing is, you and I were talking about how slow this game has been. Uh, all of a sudden now, we're seeing so much action in the last <laughs> few minutes that – this is one of the top games going on right now. Who would expect a Popkin West Orange's offense to be held to seven points with two and a half minutes left in the game? 231 left in the game. Huff back to throw. He's got a receiver open. Jaden Gibson's going to take the reception for a first down. He's going to move the chains. Hey, I like it. I'll tell you what, Nakai Martinez did a wonderful job closing on that and riding him out of balance. Out of bounds. So, uh, you know, again, you know, what's what's West Orange going to do here to to get a Popka's defense off balance? So we the, finally see them throw the throw the ball out into the flat. So the clock is running. The chains are set. Two minutes and eight seconds left in the game. Tyler Huff in no hurry here. They kind of like where they're at. I saw McDoom kicking field goals before the game. They are actually in field goal range for McDoom as of right now. But I know that Granado wants six. Rudolph in motion. They're going to throw it again to Jack Main, and Jack Main, I think, just maybe I think there's a little miscommunication there. Yeah, somebody was uh, not in the wrong place there, but um, that's still a pretty good situation for West Orange so right now. That will ten. stop the clock. One minute, 49 seconds left. Second down and ten. Tyler Huff trying to find one of his favorite senior receivers out there, Jack Main. Just a little miscommunication. But that does stop the clock. Renato has a little, little couple words of wisdom out there for his quarterback and, and Jaden Gibson. One of the things you want to think of here is West Orange wants to score here. I don't know if you want to go to overtime in a Kansas City tiebreaker-style format with a pop. You absolutely don't want this game to go to overtime. You want to take care of business right here in regulation. Huff scrambles right, throws back to the left, and he's got McDoom. McDoom, oh, he drops Dropped it. it. He drops it. McDoom high pointed it. He used his body well. Went up and went up and had the ball in his hands, and unfortunately could not come down with it. And that was an outstanding job by Tamara uh, Jackson, going up and batting. Scrambles right, throws back to the left, and he's got McDoom. McDoom, oh, he drops Dropped it. it. He drops it. McDoom high pointed it. He used his body well. Went up. all the chances now. We, our game went from taking very little chances to taking all the chances. So with, with that timeout, we have a minute 42 seconds left in the game. The score side 7-7. We're at Winter Garden, Florida for the game of the week. When we come back, we're going we're gonna to close this game out. Let's find out if West Orange can punch it in right here on the Varsity Sports Network. Southern Equipment Rental is your number one stop for all of your equipment rental and sales needs. Conveniently located in the land of Norman Beach, Florida. We offer construction equipment for rent and sale. Our factory trained and certified technicians are available to help you choose the right equipment that best fits your needs. 
Whether you're looking for a wood chipper, a ditch witch, bobcat, or any other type of equipment, we can help. Call us today to learn more. We are back on the Varsity Sports Network. Tyler Huff at quarterback, 142 left in the game. He's back to pass again. He's going to scramble. He's got a receiver. And it's going to be incomplete. It's going to bring up fourth down from the 21-yard line, which would set up a 31, excuse me, 37-yard field goal attempt. Again, outstanding job by a Popkins defensive back, Nakai and they're Martinez. Gonna, guys, they're going to kick this. McDoom will try a field goal to take the lead with a minute 36 seconds left. This young man has done everything all night. He's returned punts. He's, he's played on defense. He's played on offense. He's returned kicks. And now here he is attempting his second field goal of the night. The first one was blocked. And they and blocked the it again. The second one was blocked. And Apopka scoops it up. And Apopka's moving across midfield. Nakai Martinez. Nakai Martinez again comes up with a big play. 45-yard line, Apopka has the ball in West Orange territory with a minute 24 seconds left. Dan, this is the game we wanted, man. Yeah. Game almost blocked. And Apopka scoops it up, and Apopka's moving across midfield. Nakai Martinez. Nakai Martinez again comes up with a... Their defenses have played so outstandingly the entire night. So we, These we, are two high-powered offenses that typically aren't in this situation. But with a minute 24, Heath, Apopka's got plenty of time to get this drive, to get the ball driving right now with a very short field. Josiah Robinson on that carry, Heath. Yeah, he's going to pick up, it looks like, five yards there. And we're going to have a timeout. That'll stop the clock with a minute, 10 seconds left. Coach Rolston wants to take a second here, regroup. And, guys, before before the game, I was watching the Apopka kicker, and he was he was connecting from about 40 yards. I think he's good from 40. They got to get to, I'd say, the 20, the 25, the 30, the 25-yard line, I think is about where they need to get to to be able to yeah, make Yeah, Kobe this. Vasquez has done a wonderful job this season, and, you know, they get another another 10 yards. It, it, it's going to be possibly within his distance. But, um, you know, with a minute 10, you don't know. Yeah, Dan, I think they need about 10 to 15 yards to get in field goal range. And like I said, I saw the kicker before the game. He's definitely got the leg. If they can get about 10 to 15 more yards with a minute 10 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. Yeah. The game is tied 7-7. Apopka second down and five from the Warrior 40-yard line. Direct snap to Javen Robinson. He is going to be thrown out of bounds by Jayla Paul and East Jr. Again, that guy is all over the field. And they're going to call that. They're going to call that his, his forward momentum was stopped, so they're going to call have the clock keep running here. I believe Apopka does have two timeouts left. I don't think they have. Either way, guys, yeah, the clock. Is, it. I don't know why you wait. Why do you wait that long to call that timeout, Dan? I I honestly don't know. I mean, that's something that uh, that we're gonna have to find out here well, when we get back. Yeah, when we get back on the Varsity Sports Network. The best part of my job is helping people realize not only their dreams but also their potential. My name is Dan LaForest, and I am a wealth advisor with Security Financial Management. 
No matter how good you may be at a skill, it's always important to have a coach to help you refine those skills and game plan for the next challenge. Helping clients realize the process will give them the confidence of knowing that we have taken the appropriate steps to protect themselves and their families. All right, we are back in Winter Garden, Florida. I'm Heath Ziegler, joined by Dan LaForest right here on the Varsity Sports Network. And, Dan, we got a tie ball game, 38.8 seconds left in the game. And this is a big third down for the Apopka Blue Darters. they got to be able to move the chains here if they have any chance at trying to get into field goal range. Well, and you got to wonder, what's the strategy here? I think they just do what they do. If, if they break it, if not, we're looking at overtime, Heath, and that might be in Apopka's favor. Javen Robinson is going to be stuffed. Now, if you're Coach Granado, are you are you calling timeout? Are you trying to make them have to punt here? Because they can run the clock out here and not even have to snap the ball. There you go. There's your timeout. And I, actually, a pop could decide to take the timeout. I do not understand that, Dan. Why not let the clock run out? Now you have to snap the ball another time. A bad snap. What I mean. Well, the other side of that, too, is this is four down territory. Um, if a Popka does decide to go for it here, what does it look like? Because if they don't get it, you have a long field for West Orange to have to try to drive with, well, with less than 20 seconds. If they, if they don't get it, they're going to bring put the ball in Tyler Huff's hands with, with the tallest receiver in, in, in Orange County. I think with a Popka's defense, I would take that shot. I'd take that shot, especially in a prevent type style defense. This may not be a bad strategy by Coach Rolson. I think he's playing for overtime. I think he likes his chances. Like I said, they don't, you know, fourth down. Just a quick score update. Osceola Cowboys up 17-14 on the Edgewater Eagles. And uh, we could have an upset brewing down there in Kissimmee. Those Cowboys with the K are up by three on Edgewater. But, guys, we got 22 seconds left. It's fourth down right here in Winter Garden, Florida. A Popka Blue Darters, fourth down. We have a timeout by Coach Granado. He wanted to kind of take a look and see what they were in. You know, you, you talk about that, Heath. Next week sets up a, another really big matchup with Edgewater and Jones. Jones being undefeated. What happens with Edgewater tonight still, whether they win or lose, next week's game really is going to put a lot on the line. All right, guys, we're going to step away really quick for a brief break. And when we come back right here on the Varsity Sports Network, we're going to have the conclusion of this game. Welcome back. It's fourth down for Apopka Blue Darters. Here we go. Oh, it's a bad oh. snap. He's going to try to throw it. He completes it, but he's going to be brought down. Oh, he's still fighting. He's still fighting. but he, he, oh, I think he's got it. He might have got the first down. Josiah Robinson with a reception and fought past the yard marker. They are going to spike the ball here. 13.3 seconds left. They're going to spike the ball here. And Apopka might have a shot for a field goal here. What an unbelievable effort for Apopka to move the chains. There you have it. Eight. The clock has not stopped. 6.9 seconds left. So they bring him out. We're talking about a 52-yard field goal in high school, Heath. Crazier things have happened. We've got an injury down on the field. 6.9 seconds left in the fourth quarter. We have an injured player on the field. Tie ball game, 7-7. Seven to seven. And that is, uh, looks like uh, Josiah Robinson. Hopefully. While we have the Blue Daughter down on the field, let's take one last break here. When we come back, we're going to find out if Apopka can kick a 52-yard field goal.
They lose him for the rest of the season? Oh, he's all right. No, no, he's cramped up. He's cramped. He's, he's fine. I could tell when they're looking at him. He's all righty. Up. We are back here with 6.9 seconds left on the Varsity Sports Network. I'm Heath Ziegler, joined by Dan LaForest. We have a heck of a game for you guys right now. It's tied up 7-7. Seven to seven. Uh, Popka's attempting a 52-yard field goal to win the game. This would be an unbelievable comeback. Apopka has not scored, scored a touchdown, has less than a 100-yard offense, and has a chance to win the game. The you know, only touchdown they scored was a fumble recovery on defense. And right now, West Orange is playing this deep back, too, because yeah. if this is a short field goal, this is returnable. Here's the snap. Here's the hold. The kick is away. And that is no good. Oh, and he missed it by maybe three yards. That was a heck of a shot. I tell you what, for a 52-yard field goal for a young man in high school, I like that, that is uh, th that, that's a difficult task. So take our hats off for Apopka to, for, for giving that a shot. So I guess West Orange technically does have one snap left here. And I think we're going to know what they're going to do with it. I mean, this is what you practice, right? <laughs> for, uh, you know, the end of practice, you run the little hook and ladder to close things out. I mean, we're going to have to see some trickery here. Do we see some laterals? I mean, do, do we see a, one of those plays that we end I'll up I'll be seeing honest with you. I, I, think, I think Coach Ignato is going to run the ball here, He's and we're going to load well, up for, you know what? I mean, for a little Kansas City tiebreaker. I mean, this is where maturity comes in. Do you just take a knee here? Very well could be. You know, don't even He's mess up the handoff. Yeah, he's under center. It looks like Hulk's yeah. going to take a knee. Well, guys, formation. we are going to overtime on the Varsity Sports Network. And that's going to do it for regulation. 7-7 seven, seven, tied. We will have a little coin flip here in just a moment to figure out who's going to get the ball, who's going to go on defense first. The best part of my job is helping people realize not only their dreams, but also their potential. My name is Dan LaForest, and I am a wealth advisor with Security Financial Management. No matter how good you may be at a skill, it's always important to have a coach to help you refine those skills and game plan for the next challenge. Helping clients realize the process will give them the confidence of knowing that we have taken the appropriate steps to protect themselves and their families. I'm Angel Carlson and I'm with the A-Team of Charles Ruttenberg Realty. We're located in delightful downtown DeLand and we service all of Central Florida. Our team is here to serve you for all of your real estate needs, whether you're buying, selling, or looking to invest. There is no time like the present to sell your existing home and buy your new one with the A-Team. Call me, Angel Carlson, so the A-Team can deliver your dream today. Southern Equipment Rental is your number one stop for all of your equipment rental and sales needs. Conveniently located in Deland and Norman Beach, Florida. We offer construction equipment for rent and sale. Our factory trained and certified technicians are available to help you choose the right equipment that best fits your needs. Whether you're looking for a wood chipper, a ditch witch, bobcat, or any other type of equipment, we can help. Call us today to learn more. I don't know, Vito. Hey, East, East River. Hey, I got a good one for you. Then Winter Park, Timber Creek. That would be a good game. Yeah? Yeah. Well, we talked about that. Oh. <laughs> All right. I apologize for that. We're, we're talking about other games, and we've got one right here in front of us. And boy, do we have a good one, Dan. I'm Heath Ziegler, joined by Dan LaForest on, on the Varsity Sports Network. This is the, BAS, the BSN's uh, Game of the Week. West Orange Warriors versus Apopka Blue Darters. If you're just joining us for overtime, Apopka's in white, and they have the ball first here. West Orange is in blue. You get four downs to score from the 10-yard line in overtime in Central Florida High School football. Outstanding run. Is that Javen Robinson? Javen Again, Robinson he, on that he, first play, yeah. He, he's got a, quite a few carries tonight. That's going to give them a second and goal from about the three-yard line. Nothing like free football, man. We get extra football tonight, you know? Well, you know, the, th the thing is for many Apopka and West Orange fans is they're used to seeing all these points and all these explosive plays, and we just haven't seen it. It has been dominated by the defense up until – 
right now, and this is a whole nother ball game. Javen Robinson again up the middle, and he's going to go in for the touchdown, guys. I, that will put Apopka up for the moment, 13-7, to with the extra point coming here. And if I'm, if I'm Coach Rolson, I'm not sure I don't just go for two with the way that they're moving the ball. Uh, very well could be, but, you know, they haven't been running the ball up until now. I mean, that was the first time they've gotten 10 yards in two plays um, tonight. So I, I don't know if I agree with that. I think let's go ahead and kick it, being the first out of the boot. I think the question is, is what does West Orange do? You know, one of the things we talked about was whether or not West Orange wanted to get into a 10-yard battle with, with the Apopka offense and defense the way that they've been playing. And the kick is good. Dan, you are right. It's going to be 14-7. to seven. And, Dan, you bring up a good point, man. With the kicking troubles that West Orange has had, if they were able to get into the end zone here on these four plays, do you just go for the dub? I, I, you know, I think we would. I, I think I would go for two just to put an end to it because, again, you start getting into a situation where you're heavily dependent on your offense and defensive line. And a lot of these guys from West Orange, Heath, have been going both ways. So when does that fatigue – you know, you don't have 50 yards behind you to make, to make up for a mistake. All right, so West Orange will take over here at the 10-yard line. They get four plays to score here in high school football in the state of Florida. Dan, we call it a Kansas City tiebreaker. Yeah, and I'm familiar with one of these. But uh, right now, West Orange has got to get the ball in the end zone. Tyler Huff, they're going to do a little reverse. little reverse. McDoom is in. Touchdown, West Orange Warriors. Now the question is, what does West Orange do? Do they take an attempt? You can see the coaches right now huddling up, deciding. West Orange has got to get the ball in the end zone. Tyler Huff, they're going to do a little, reverse. little reverse. McDoom is in. Touchdown, West Orange Warriors. Great job. He's deciding. It looks like he's talking to Tyler Huff here about going for the win here, and it looks like he's keeping his quarterback on the field. You know, we saw the same decision last night with the jones wakava game when Wakava uh, scored second guys, and went for two. Guys, here we go. doesn't get much better than this. This is for the game. They score, they win. If they don't, a pop is going to pull, pull, pull off an amazing comeback. Tyler Huff and Gunn. We got a timeout by Coach Rolson. He was about halfway down the sideline there uh, to make sure he got that timeout. He wanted to take a look at what Tyler Huff had there. When we come back, we will have the conclusion. It's going to give you one last play right here on the Varsity. All right, welcome back to Winter Garden, Florida on the Varsity Sports Network. I'm Heath Ziegler, joined by Dan LaForce. And, Dan, we have one last play for the viewers tonight, and it's all going to come down to this one last play single play it's going to be a two-point conversion attempt for the West Orange Warriors for coach Granado trying to get to four and one you like Jack Maine down there man coverage down at the bottom of your screen Tyler Huff is going to hand it off now the and reverse that, that, oh the game is over no I'm Porter sorry is wide Touchdown. open that was a, a beautiful play call and it had me fooled and the West Orange Warriors are taking the field I cannot believe that I thought the game was over, Dan. So this is the down there, man coverage down at the bottom of your screen. Tyler Huff is going to hand it off. Now the and reverse. That, that, oh. The game is over. No, I'm Porter sorry. Is wide Touchdown. open. That was a, a beautiful play call, and it had me fooled. Hopkins was going to bring the hounds that were going to lock down their corners, and this was the perfect play because nobody is accountable for the quarterback.